In this video, we are going to be looking at the rules relating to interior and exterior angles in polygons. Thank you for having a look at my channel. If you do find this useful, don't forget to hit the subscribe. So let's start by having a look at what we're actually talking about here. The word polygon, it means a many sided shape. So we're familiar with pentagons, hexagons, octagons and the like. When the word pentagon is mentioned, most people consider a shape that looks like this. One, two, three, four, five sides, five equal corners. In fact, technically, this is actually called a regular pentagon. It's regular because all the five sides are the same length and therefore all the corners are the same size angle. However, this shape on the right is also a pentagon. It is a shape with five sides. The only difference, of course, that in this case, the sides are all different and so are the angles. So this is an irregular pentagon. It's important to know the difference because some of the rules that we're going to talk about in this video apply to both regular and irregular, whereas some of them are simply about the regular shape. And I will talk about which rule applies to which as we go along. Let's have a closer look at a regular polygon. This one, the pentagon, the five-sided figure. There are two types of angle that we associate with a polygon, and those are the interior angles, the ones on the inside, and the exterior angles, the ones on the outside. And I'm going to start by looking at the exterior angle, because it's not what we might imagine. The interior angle is indeed the angle that goes around the corner, but the exterior angle is not the outside of the same corner. So let's have a look at it more closely. I think a good way to picture this is to imagine that you are walking around the outside of the pentagon. So you start walking along the wall on the right here, and this is the direction that you're traveling in. Now, if you were to continue in a straight line, you would follow the blue line here and continue in this direction. However, if you're going to walk around the polygon, you are going to take a corner here. And it is the number of degrees that you turn which is actually the exterior angle. If you were then to continue walking in a straight line, a similar thing would happen. You would end up wandering off in this direction, but instead you take another corner. So you move around this angle here. So this is the exterior angle. And of course, if I draw it roughly, we have another one here, we have another one here, and we have another one here. Now, because this is a regular polygon, each of these corners is the same size. Therefore, each of the angle, if we call that angle X, each of these is the angle X. And this makes it simple for us to calculate, because if you consider what we've done here, we started out here and we have effectively gone round in a full circle. So in total, we have turned 360 degrees. Now we have done that by making five equal turns. Each turn we made was the same number of degrees. So if we take the 360 and divide it by five, that gives us the external angle, which is 72 degrees. This is where it is important to note that this would not work with an irregular polygon because, of course, all the corners, all the angles are different. And just to show a different example, here we have the octagon, the eight sided shape. Exactly the same thing applies. Each time you go round a corner, you are taking the same angle. Therefore, to find out the exterior angle of an octagon, you have traveled round 360 degrees, but you have done so by turning eight corners. So to find the angle of each of those eight corners, it is this time 360 divided by eight. Therefore, the exterior angle of a regular octagon is 45 degrees. 
Now let's have a look at the interior angle. And first of all, I want to look at a rule that works again just for the regular polygon. I've gone back to using a pentagon here and we have already worked out what the exterior angle is because we said it was 360 degrees divided by the five turns, the five corners. Therefore, it's 72 degrees. Now, if you look at the diagram, we can apply one of the angle laws because we have a straight line here and using the rule that angles on a straight line must add up to 180 degrees, we can therefore say that 180 minus 72 is 108 degrees. Therefore, 108 degrees must be the internal angle here. If you're not sure about the rule of angles on a straight line, please have a look at my other two angle laws videos and we've got it all explained in there. As I mentioned, this only works for a regular polygon where you can work out the exterior angle first. You are quite often asked to work out the sum of the interior angles. In other words, the total of all corners, five in this case. Now, with a regular polygon, the rule that we've just applied here becomes useful because to work out the total, all you would do is take the 108 and multiply that by five because of course each corner is the same they're all 108 therefore the total is 540 degrees some of these numbers you could actually memorize in the same way that we remember that a triangle interior angles are 180 quadrilateral 360 a pentagon 540 and you can memorize some of the other shapes what I want to look at though is a situation where we have an irregular polygon so that we're not able to work out the exterior angle so simply and therefore it's not so easy to work out the interior. So let's take a look at one of those. Here then we have a six sided shape, therefore it is a hexagon, it is just not regular. Therefore the exercise we just performed is not possible, every angle is different. Thankfully, we have a rule that allows us to work out the sum of the interior angles, the total of them all. Quite simply, we count the number of sides on the shape. So in this case, because it's a hexagon, the number is six. Whatever number we have here, six for a hexagon, eight for an octagon, 10 for a decagon, whatever that number is, we subtract two. So the first part of the formula is the number of sides, let's call that n, minus two. When we've worked that out, we then multiply that number by 180. And that will give us the total of the interior angles of the shape that we're looking at. So in this case, six minus two is four, so four, times 180 equals 720 degrees and indeed the interior angles of a hexagon do add up to 720. Had this been the pentagon that we were looking at earlier then there are five sides so we would take the five sides and again subtract two that leaves us with three so we get three times 180 and in fact it gives us 540, which we already knew. So a little formula to remember there, the number of sides minus two, then multiplied by 180, and it works for any polygon, regular or irregular. Now, unfortunately, there are two or three different kinds of questions that can be asked which concern angles in polygons, and I want to have a look at some of those. Here's the first one. It is telling us that a regular polygon has an exterior angle of 20 degrees, and it's asking how many sides does it have? Well, if we think about the way that we calculated the exterior angle, we said that whatever shape it was, if you travel all the way around it, you have traveled 360 degrees. We then divided that by the number of corners, let's call that X, and that gave us 
the angle is 20 degrees. Let's move this around a little and by readjusting it we end up with 360 divided by 20 equals x. Again, if you're not sure about moving around simple formula, have a look at the video on my channel. In this case, we end up with 18 equals x. So 18 is the number of sides. Now here's a question where we have a double problem because in fact algebra has been included with the shape. We're being asked to find the value of x. Now each of these corners has been given a size but the size is quoted in terms of x. So for instance the angle on the left here is x. We know the next angle round is three times larger. It's 3x and so on around. We have a 2x, a 2x and the next angle round is x plus 40 degrees and finally x plus 50. We need to take this a step at a time and the first thing we do is consider what the total of all these angles would be. In other words, the sum of the interior angles. And we do that the same as we did earlier. We count the number of sides, don't forget. We take the number of sides and take away the number two. So in this case, six minus two, and then we times that by 180. So we end up with four times 180. So 720 degrees is the total of all these angles. We can therefore write that down as an equation. So starting with the left hand side and working clockwise, if we add all the angles together, in other words, we have the angle X, we then need to add on the next angle, which is 3X and continue around the shape, plus 2X, plus 2X, then we have to add on x plus 40 and finally we are adding on x plus 50. We know that these all add up to 720. Therefore we have an equation and like any equation one thing we would do is simplify it and in this case it's by collecting like terms. So if we count how many x's there are one plus three, plus two, plus two, plus one, plus one, there are in fact 10 x's. We also then need to collect the numbers. We have a plus 40 and a plus 50, so that's plus 90. So simplified, we know that 10 x plus 90 is 720. Let's move the 90 to the other side. We then get 10 x equals 720 minus 90. Therefore, 10x equals 630. If we move that around again, that means that x is therefore equal to 630 divided by 10. x is therefore 63 degrees. And the final question gives us three shapes. It tells us that a, B, C, D, E on the left hand side here is a regular pentagon as is E, H, J, K, L. A, E, L is a regular triangle, therefore equilateral. We are asked to work out the size of angle D, E, H, which is the angle here. Now, the way we do this one is to combine our knowledge of angles within shapes together with another angle rule and that angle rule is that angles around a point, the point at E here, add up to 360 degrees. So if we can work out the other three angles, we can therefore work out the angle that we're looking for here. Let's take probably the simple one first. Angles inside a triangle add up to 180 degrees. As this is an equilateral triangle, all three angles are the same, so divide that by three we have 60. So the angle AEL, the bottom part here, is 60 degrees. Now because the two pentagons are regular and they both fit the triangle, therefore they are the same size, they have the same interior angles. Now the way to calculate the interior angle of the pentagon, there are two ways. One, you can simply memorize it, in which case you can simply quote it, 
or you would follow the formula that we've been using. So a pentagon has five sides. If we take away two and then multiply by 180, so three times 180, that means the sum of the angles inside the pentagon is 540. We will then take that 540 and divide it by five because there are five equal angles and we find that each of those angles is actually 108 degrees. That means that the angle here is 108 and the angle on the opposite side is 108 degrees. If we add these three angles up, so we have 108, 108 and we have 60. If we add them together, we get 276 degrees. So that's the three angles added together. To find the fourth one then, we need simply to take 360 and take away the 276 and we find we have an angle of 84 degrees. So that is angle D E H. So in summary, a few things that it will be useful to know. Certainly the names of the common polygons, how many sides in a pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, etc. Also the angle laws, so to know how many degrees there are in angles on a straight line or around a point. Also the rule to find the sum of the interior angles. Don't forget it's the number of sides, take away two and then multiply by 180. And also how to find an exterior angle of a regular polygon, 360 degrees, divided by the number of sides. In addition to this, I think because of the variety of different questions that you can be asked. Well, I hope you did find that useful. As I mentioned in the video, one of the problems is the variety and types of questions that can be asked in relation to polygons. So have a look at some past questions and try and look at different types of questions to familiarise yourself with them. Please do hit the subscribe button. I will see you soon. Thank you.